This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett and this is the Ramble and uh, we'll show our picture and our citizens panel and all of that about a 25 minutes from right now uh, I uh, have a little message for Damien at that time I will uh, t- uh, elucidate on what you were saying about the uh, video toaster on your program uh, but what I w- tried to tell you was that a guy by the name of Ron Thornton uh, came and saw the video toaster in Topeka, Kansas, and he said, I want to use that on this TV show. I think we can do all the special effects with it. And that's that was the first time CGI had ever been used as special effects on a TV show. And then another friend of New Tech who made the video toaster was uh, Todd Rundgren. And Todd did, his fir- had, did a video the first video ever with CGI using the video toaster. So that, that's just a little history for you. I just wanted to help you with the history. And if, if you want to talk more about it, give me a call later, Damien, and we'll talk, we'll talk for, the, for a couple of minutes about it and about all the things you found. Well, I, I got to thank Damien because Damien did me a real solid today, and I'll talk about that. But, you know, we have a guest, and I want to get to our guest because I love this guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the most backward individual of the 21st century. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown, and Larry is, of course, the ultimate Luddite. (laughs) I wish I could say, Larry, that, you know, that you were up to things computer-wise, but we have talked about this rather continually, and, uh, and you're not. And no. it's you know I'm starting with like Ruben and with uh, with Durst, uh, they have Skype, and so I uh, I simply put their Skype picture on li- on the show, and we we see them, but nobody can see the beautiful, lovely, warm, enchanting face that is Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, well, that could be a big plus, I think. So uh, uh, maybe maybe we'll stick with the old school. You know, well, no, you know something. You have one of those few voices that, when, I remember when I was a kid, I used to listen to radio, and then all of a sudden they would, in the newspaper, put a picture of the guy who was on the radio, and I could never match the voice with the picture. It was always a, a amazing disappointment to me. <laughs> yes. And... Because they were either they, they were fat or they looked ugly. Or I couldn't imagine the voice coming out of that guy. All right? So it was always a disappointment to me when I saw pictures of my favorite radio people. And I think that's funny that we always, uh, when you hear a voice, for some reason you do conjure up a uh, physical image of that person. Now, now, here's the thing with you. If people listen to your voice and try to conjure up an image of you, And then I showed them a picture of you, which they're probably looking at right now because I run kind of a little animation with a picture of you behind it. Um, You look just like you sound. (laughs) Someone said I sound like a turtle. (laughs) Well, you you have a turtle. And I look like a turtle, so maybe that's true. You have a turtle-esque kind of, uh, you know. In fact, didn't you used to wear like um, um, uh, turtleneck sweaters? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. So that even added to the turtle neckiest. <laughs> is that the tur- is, I just made up a word. The turtle neckiest that is Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> so you live up to your voice, you know. And, well, that's, that's good, maybe. But you know, I mean, it's like it's like uh, I don't know if you saw Woody Allen's Radio Days, but the guy who plays the Masked Avenger on radio was played by Wally Shawn, right? You know, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and how disappointing it was to see him because he, beware evildoers, you know. And uh, he, he somehow had the voice, but he didn't have the looks. And um, that always, that's, what, that's one of the things I loved about radio. You know, that, uh, that radio 
where I listened and I made up pictures in my mind was the best, I think, the mo best and most influential thing in my life. Yeah, because I, Because I could just sit there and uh, imagine what all these people looked like, and uh, they were painting these audio pictures. And so when I went to radio myself, I did that very thing. I, I did the audio pictures. Uh, you, you may have noticed when, we, when I did radio, a lot of it was just creating an image for people of what was, what was going on. That's what was great about it, yeah. And, and that's why I had a studio audience, because all those shows had a studio audience. And I went, you know, just because we're, you know, in a new millennium or whatever, doesn't mean you can't have a studio audience on radio. But uh, there's no station in the country I could do that in today because, you know, to begin with, they'd have to have everybody go through uh, metal detectors oh, yeah, yeah. and things like that. We just let anybody in the fucking door. <laughs> I'm surprised we never had an incident. <laughs> there were some strange characters that came in there. I'm su we, I never in the, in the uh, what, 11 years, I guess, that we did a show with a studio audience. I don't think I ever... No, seventeen years with the studio audience. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't think I ever had one ounce of trouble with with the people that came in. No, they were always very respectful, and they were glad to be there. And uh, I, you know, we had uh, we had like Curtis D. Martini was my security guy. He and ran if, security. <laughs> and if anybody got if anybody got boisterous. Uh, he could uh, get them, lead them out of there. However, if anybody ever saw Curtis D. Martini, you'd say to yourself, "I mean, the name engenders uh, a guy who could beat the crap out of you, all right?" <laughs> but in reality, the visual wasn't a guy who could beat the crap out of you. <laughs> it was like the Wall of Sean thing again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, so I, I, you know, I always loved to paint pictures when I did radio, and uh, that was the the great thing about it. You know, you, uh, Stan Freeberg did a thing once on an old Stan Freeberg radio show when he did them, saying, basically, here's what I love about radio. He says, now we're going to take, you know, we're going to make the world's biggest chocolate sundae, you know, and they said we're going to put up a mountain of, of whipped cream and then. We're going to have a helicopter come and drop the world's biggest cherry on top of it. And then he did it all with sound effects. And you went, hey, you know, he just made the world's biggest ice cream sundae. Uh, and that's, that's what I really loved about the old radio. And so when I went into radio, that was the radio I took with me. And boy, was I disappointed because I had to fight for everything I ever did that way. Because people just couldn't see the validity in it, and I said, "Hey, it worked once; it can work again." Mm -hmm. You know, and so what most people remember about my radio show in San Francisco is what the studio audience. Yeah, you know, and sometimes we'd have three people there, and sometimes we'd have a hundred and fifty. You know, but it was a studio audience, and uh, it also made, didn't it make you as a comedian work better. Oh, yeah, you knew what was working, so it was great. I mean, uh, when you go on other shows and there's nobody there and no one's laughing, you go, is this working or not? I don't it, know, you it, know. It was much like being on stage. It was. It was like performing, yeah. Yeah. and was, that, was, that was so much fun. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it also, what I used to say was it made us honest. You know, it, the funny part is you sit there and you're doing a radio program and then you're telling a joke, and the only person that's laughing, if he's laughing at all, is you've got, like, in some stations, an engineer running the control board in another room. So you're, you're playing to him, and if he's laughing, you figure, ah, I guess it's... <laughs> you think it might be working. <laughs> it might be working, although I've had some guys that just didn't even give a shit about listening to the program. All they cared about was twiddling the knobs at the right time. When you got one of those, it was just a... I, I would walk in, I would see who the engineer was, and I said, well, tonight's going to be a good show. <laughs> and, and tonight's going to be a bad show. And, um, but uh, 
the problem was, and it was a pro- it's a problem in radio in general. I mean, if you have some guys doing a morning show and they think they're being funny, they're laughing with each other. But it may not be funny. It might not be truly funny. But if you've got, oh, 50 people sitting there, and now you, you're talking to a comedian, you're playing, and you're having some repartee with the other people in the room, and they laugh, you know you're getting a genuine laugh out there from the audience. Right. So all these morning show hosts live in the delusion that they're hilarious when they're really not. And, you know, are people sitting in their car laughing heavy? No, I doubt it. But I bet a lot of people got a big laugh out of listening to my show in the mornings. So Absolutely. You know. there, in fact, there was only one guest you ever had that didn't like the studio audience. Who was that? She freaked out. You see, now you remember everything, yes. and I, in my dotage, remember nothing. You had, in fact, she, she walked in and almost jumped out of her shoes, and she ran out, and then somebody got her and brought her, and you had to go interview her in a different studio. You remember? I'm, I vaguely remember that happening, but I can't remember who the fuck it was. Camille Paglia. Oh, yes. Yes. She was a very difficult woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, very interesting. I remember it now. She walked in. She saw the studio audience. She said, I didn't <laughs> sign up for this. I don't want to talk in front of it. She, what she was really afraid of is because she was so opinionated and people were always attacking her that she was afraid that this audience would, like, jump her, you know, and, and that yeah. she, in other words, it was one woman against 50 people, okay? And... Uh, so I did. I had to take her what into another studio, and we sat there and did the interview. I, right. It, it's amazing you remember that, because I awesome. don't remember it for shit. I'm pretty sure it was '92. See, see, see. Bubbles is this? It's, it's, he's Rain Man. <laughs> Rain Man. He's Rain Man. <laughs> Wapner, definitely Wapner. Wapner. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but I mean, you are kind of like Rain Man. I mean, you remember dates. You know. Remember dates and. Uh, Do you remember the first day, for instance? Let me let me throw some out to you. Let's see if you can get them. First day that I ever did a show at Live One Hundred Five. Live One Hundred Five. It was. Uh, let's see. It was. Should have been. February of eighty six. And it would have been. It would have been a Monday. Been, would have been a Monday. So it was either the. Uh, would have been February 9th or 16th. Wow. See, why didn't I call you when I was doing my life story? <laughs> you know, I, because I did my life story extemporaneously with, uh, you know, uh, just telling it. And I many times forgot the uh, sequence of events. For instance, when I left, uh, when I left uh, uh, the quake... And I went to Live 105. Oh, wait, uh, wait, no. When I left KML and went to the, the Quake, I couldn't. I thought it was like the next Monday. And it was actually about three or four, maybe five months later that, I, that we actually had that much time off before we went on the air at the Quake. And wow. then I can't remember you, what, what the time period was between being on the Quake and and uh, it's, well, I couldn't remember things like that. And I bet if I asked you, like, what was the period of time between me being at KQAK and going over to Live 105? Was it like the next Monday or was it several months? Yeah, it was several months. You, in fact, you, uh, I remember Quake was going, I remember you guys were worried that the checks were not going to clear towards the end. No, the first guy to, to get to the bank was the one who got his paycheck. <laughs> I don't know the exact date, but I remember it was 80, 85. You were pretty much off for the summer and then didn't, didn't come back till uh, February of uh, 86 for Live 105. Right. But you did keep, uh, you had something on, uh, you put messages on your phone every week so people could call in and stay in touch with you. And you were, you give little reviews of movies and stuff. Did, did I, did I, I think I did that on the internet, didn't I? Or did I do it on the phone? That was before the internet. I remember you could get it on the phone. Oh, really? Call, I don't remember give, doing that, but I probably Yeah, you were giving did. comedy listings and things like that. And that was like the summer of 85. Wow. 
It's amazing. You know, it's amazing that I spent that much time off the air in between each and every uh, station I went to and that I was able to get an audience back when I went back on. Yeah, that is a huge break. You know, because people people are very short on memory. Um, although I do get a lot of people who remember the, the radio show in San Francisco and say, boy, those were the days. I wish we had that kind of radio today. Mm -hmm. Um and, and then they write me and they say, you should come back to San Francisco and do that show. And I went, hey, if I did that show today, nobody would listen to it, you know? Or it, it, it just wouldn't catch on. Or even worse, I couldn't get a radio station that was hip enough to understand the validity of what I was doing, you know? They just thought, hey, Alex Bennett got ratings. No, more to it than that. You know, we did a show. We put on a show. Yeah, those uh, live shows in the morning when we'd uh, go out to some location; those were amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We we had a lot. We had a lot of. We had a lot of fun. Well, you know that was then. This is now. I used to be a big shot, and now I'm nothing. <laughs> you know. Believe me, you're bel I was up in Napa Sunday night. And, uh, everybody came up. So we got three people. Where's Alex Bennett? <laughs> Where's Alex Bennett? You, you, it's kind of the equivalent of what I get living in this apartment house that I live in. Because this, <laughs> this apartment house this apartment house was the apartment house in New Jack City where a gang of drug dealers take over the building and turn it into a crack house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see New Jack City? No, but I think you told me that. And who, yeah. who was in that? In the, uh, uh, Wesley the Snipes. Star? And at one point, he's got a diagram of the building. And he points to a place in the building and says, this is where we'll build the meth lab. And it's our kitchen. <laughs> so, Or maybe it's the pantry next door to the kitchen, but that's where he points. So if anybody wants to know which apartment to rob, just go get a copy of New Jack City <laughs> and, and you will see where our apartment is. But uh, what happens is, and I've had this happen, I had this happen twice in the last three weeks. I'll get like a... Uh, a cab at Costco to take me back home. And uh, as we pull up to the building, the driver will go, oh, the Carter. Now, that isn't the name of the building as we know it here. The building is <laughs> called the Graham Court. But they had put a thing up that said the Carter because they, they referred to the building as the Carter. So everybody goes, this is the Carter. I had two That's people cool. who were, like, taking pictures through the gate and I said, you want to come in and take a look? They said, yeah. They said, this is the Carter, isn't it? <laughs> you know? So it's, 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 um, it, it's kind of like people remembering me in San Francisco, you know, and, and that I used to be a big shot. You know, now I'm nothing. I sit here. I'm, I'm four, four years unemployed, and uh, I, I seriously doubt most people remember who the hell I am. Well, and that's when every time I go to a gig, they certainly didn't remember you. So, they yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Well, you know, but people say to me, well, "You should come back to San Francisco and do the show here again." And I, I try to tell them, you know, it's a different time, it's a different age. You've got nothing but radio organizations that are going bankrupt, and they're not going to take a chance on anything, on anything new. And that's that's the problem with the business that I I chose to love, and I hate to see it be this way, but it is. I mean, I do this thing every night where I don't just talk to one person. I talk to up. Well, last week we had like upwards of twelve people on the line at the same time, all talking with each other. Wow! Now, now that isn't done anywhere in radio, and I've tried to sell that idea. And I can't get anybody to bite because everybody's too afraid to do anything because all these companies are going bankrupt and they don't want to be the guy who puts them over the top. You know, that's so that's exactly why they should take a chance. You know, it's not what they're doing is not working. Well, so. when nothing's working, it's the best time to take a chance. Yeah, but you know, the other time they won't take a chance is when something is working. Like I can't tell you how many times I would go into my program director or into you know the boss and say. You know, I want to make some changes in my show. I want to bring it, I want to change it a little bit. I want to up the game. And they go, no, don't do anything. You've you got great ratings. You're doing terrific. If, you, if we don't change a thing. 
And I tried to convince them, this is the time to change the thing because people will follow you into it. It's later on when the ratings start going down, they say, what are we going to do? How are we going to change this? It's too late. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me. I mean, I called the shot perfectly. It, it, the time to change anything, time for you to change your act is when you're a hit. But whenever that happens, Larry, uh, <laughs> you know, not that you shouldn't be. Not that you're not one of the, you know, everybody I talk to, whether it's Durst or Ruben or, or, or Pearl, uh, you always come up in the conversation. <laughs> Number one, you're the most well-loved comic I know. <laughs> Beloved, because I'm no threat. <laughs> N- nobody hates Larry Bubbles Brown. Really? <laughs> Why don't, I'll tell you, I will hate you, okay? Just so you can have somebody who hates you. And then, of course, everybody will say to me, you son of a bitch, how can you hate Larry Bubbles Brown? Really? Yeah, no, nobody. Wait, do you know anybody that hates you? Have you ever had anybody that hated you? I don't know. I just feel like everyone's always nice to you in person, but comics can be kind of a backstabbing Oh, the comics lot, are so di- I just figure behind my back, they probably hate me. <laughs> that's, no, that's different because you've got a bunch of people who are all fighting for the same space. You know? And, and, and so every other comic is the deadly enemy of that comic. Although there was a time in San Francisco where that wasn't true. There was a time in San Francisco where every comic was helpful of every other comic. You know, you remember those days? Yeah, it lasted about a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the golden era. No, that was what was great about comedy when I first entered it in San Francisco. In uh, I think it was eighty one. When did I go on the air in San Francisco? Eighty eighty one. Well, that was be. I started in eighty one, and I heard about you. Uh, on the, I, I heard about you doing a show uh, on Camel in '82, but 80, I'm not. Yeah, well, I w- I got there in '81, if I remember correctly. Toward, towards the end of '81, like about September, August, September, somewhere around in there. And um, uh, what was the point I was going to make? Uh, and, and and you know, I mean, a lot of people, very few people, remember that show. They remember the quake. And they remember Live 105. But I don't know what the point was I was going to make. I'm very tired today, folks, because last <laughs> night I couldn't, I, yep. I couldn't get to sleep because uh, we were doing a big move out of my storage locker up in Petaluma. Uh, and uh, thanks to Damien, my friend, who did just a, you know, a wonderful thing for me. Uh, because since I, when I first got that locker... I put all my stuff in. I got a big one. It was $138 a month. You, I could have moved into the one I bought, okay? You could probably put a car in there. And it was $138. This month, if I didn't get out, the bill was going up to $371 a month. Jesus. God. And I went, fuck you. <laughs> you know? I mean, and they, I mean, they did all these raises without telling me, you know. Now, granted, the 138 was 14 years ago, but okay, double it. It's still not 371 dollars, you know. So uh, I, uh, we, we, we got out of there, and uh, so last night I was just worried about the move, right? And I couldn't get to sleep, so I took a Xanax. And that didn't work, so I took a little more of a Xanax, and finally that worked. I had to close all the shades in the bedroom and get a nap, and I slept for about five hours. So I'm just punchy today. God, if you can't sleep on a Xanax, you must have been a while up. Wow. Well, no, it's probably taking too many Xanax. I take just a little <laughs> bit of a Xanax. I don't, I don't want the whole thing, you know? I, I just take a pinch and it knocks me out. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm getting ready to go for, uh, what was that drug that Michael Jackson used? <laughs> it was like, uh, like pro, was it pro, it's, propofol? Propofol. Like propofol. Surgery. Well, yeah. Have you ever had propofol? Propofol. No. God. I have. Uh, what happens is when I would go in for a colonoscopy, that's what they give you, propofol, right? And, and, and it is the greatest high you've ever had for about a millisecond. But you remember it. 
It's just all of a sudden, what? <laughs> you know. And then the next thing you know, of course, the doctor is saying, so everything was fine. And you go, what did you do, edit out 25 minutes of my life? Uh, and so I can see why Michael Jackson, if he had sleeping problems, wanted propofol because I put him right out. But I can't say that that was great sleep. I don't I think can't he, imagine doing that every day. God. You know, my ex-wife, Ronnie, who you never met, um, just had an operation. She had pancreatic cancer, Ooh. which is the worst. You know, pancreatic worst, cancer, yeah. it's like go home, see your friends, say goodbye. And uh, she was on the table for 14 hours and she says, she's been writing, and she says, to this day, this is like about a half a week later, I'm still groggy from it. You know, I still can't get my, my shit together. But hey, listen, uh, you know, this is, uh, we've, we've done our uh, 25 minutes, and I always enjoy talking to you because you make me talk about everything. I know. I... <laughs> you, you urge me on, and you give me the right dates and all of that. So well, you got ten million stories. I got the dates, so we can. <laughs> well, let's do it again next week, okay? You got it, ladies and gentlemen. The legend of Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And let me see here. Let me turn on my camera so you can see who I am. Uh, here we go. Wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. Are we okay? All right. Hi. Wait a minute. There we go. Hello, Hello everybody. How are you? Alex Bennett here, uh, and this is The Ramble. And it goes on until midnight. And uh, we uh, take calls from people. And we do it via Skype. Uh, at uh, GabNet Live, if you have Skype. If you don't have Skype, go get it. Go to Skype.com and download it. Very easy to install. Then you just type in where it says, who do you want to call or add contact. You put in uh, GabNet Live, and uh, we, will, uh, we will talk to you, and you can be part of the Citizens Panel. The Citizens Panel, by the way, the other night, we found out that with this new um, Skype, I can put on more than just nine other people besides myself uh, doing the Citizens Panel. And we had, with me, 13 people the other night. A little more than we could handle. But just know that if you call, no matter whether we are what we used to call a full house or not, we can still accommodate you. And how do we accommodate you? Just by you doing that. Or you can call a phone number we have, which I always have to look at, 347-352-0079. Uh, 347-352-0079. What I should do is just write it and put it up here on the monitor. And then I can read it from there, and then it looks like I'm using a teleprompter. Anyway, listen, Phil is not calling tonight. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the very good news for you. Uh, you know what I want to do? I want to just make my camera. I've got to do some adjustments tonight because what happened was uh, the other night when we had that many people, I had to do some special work to get people to uh, um, to um, uh, all fit in the picture at the same time. And so I had to go back and redo it, okay, uh, tonight uh, before I went on the air. And so hopefully the citizen panel will look okay, all right? Now see, if I do a little transition here, I think we should get, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I see it, it I was doing, while well, you saw me doing it, okay. I was making it so, so I look better. So I look better, so I look better. Anyway, uh, let me open up Skype. That's something I have failed to do here. Let me open up the Skype lines, and people can now start calling me. Oh, that's a nice, interesting sound uh, that we've gotten tonight. Okay. Um, uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of some stuff here. i got to clean up the, the Skype so it looks better. And then everybody can kind of call me, and we can, uh, we can talk to you. Uh, and we talk to more than one person at a time. It becomes a group discussion. It's not a talk. It's not a talks program like this anywhere. 
And, and I, I used to call it like uh, not a, and there's no talk radio like this anywhere. And then I thought, you know, this isn't radio. This is the Internet. This is where radio people go when they're washed up. And uh, so uh, I, since I'm uh, officially washed up, uh, I can go to the Internet and do a show. It's that simple. Uh, I've been experimenting with, uh, let me turn on the air conditioning a little bit here. It's, it's not that, that warm in here, but I don't want it to get amazingly toasty. Let me go down here, bring it down. Yeah, go down. Yeah, and let it, uh, because I don't think you can hear it that much. Anyway, it uh, looks like uh, Kevin is going to call any second now because I see him coming online. And if you want to come online, you know, we have that phone number. Three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. If you don't want to use Skype, if you want to use Skype, we are GabNet Live. That is our uh, our thing. And if you don't want to know how to do any of this, just go over to GabNet.net, and you can get all the information you need uh, to get you uh, up and up and running, uh, calling our program. So this is the part of the program where I sit here twiddling my thumbs. The other night I was twiddling my thumbs, and I think for the first 10 minutes we only had two people, and I said, boy, this is going to be a slow night. And then we wound up having 12 people. By the way, while I'm waiting for somebody to call, uh, let me uh, thank Damien Chaplin. He does the exchange here, and if you don't listen to his show, it's really a very nice kind of like, conversation he does and I really enjoy it and uh, you should listen to him but the other reason to listen to him is he did me a real solid this week uh, he uh, he moved all my stuff out of my out of my uh, uh, storage locker and this storage locker when I first started using it was costing me hundred and thirty eight dollars a month big one big uh, 10 by 20 or something like that it was huge and so, you know, when you move into one of those places, here's the problem. Don't ever move into a storage locker unless you absolutely have to. And I'm, not, I'm sorry, Damien, because I know that's what you do for a living. And I, I don't want to rain on your, your parade. Uh, but once you move into a storage locker, you tend to forget it. You, know, you put it on auto pay and for years you get charged for it. So for years, I kept getting charged every month. And what they did was they kept raising the, the price on it. Hi, Kevin. How are you? There is, how are you doing? Here is, here is Kevin. Let me, uh, but while, before, before I actually get into a conversation with you, Kevin, uh, let me just tell people uh, that uh, uh, a part of the story here of what was going on. I want to see. Are you okay? Yeah, I got I to gotta do some adjusting here let me see here uh let me see here if i move that down yeah you're okay then i'll then i'll then there we go now you're perfect okay i, I had to frame you in the picture mm -hmm. um, started 138 dollars this this uh this uh, storage locker and and then you forget it's there and every now and then they would raise the price but they never sent me anything saying, we're raising the price this month, $15, $25. They just did it. And by the time we got to 14 years later of this thing being, and the locker is in Petaluma, California, where I can't even get to it, okay? Uh, the price, if I had renewed this next month, would have been $367 a month. Oh, crap. Yeah. I mean, isn't that higher than the inflation over the last 14 years? <laughs> for Petaluma, probably no. <laughs> probably not for Petaluma. Anyway, so thanks to Damien, he got me out of there just in time. And yesterday, he and a friend took all the boxes and all the gear I had in there. We left the desks, okay, some desks I had. And then he went back today and picked up a rocking chair I wanted and some posters and moved everything out and into his storage facility. And I just think that is the nicest thing anybody's done for me in a long, long time. And, you know, this is a guy who physically I've never, I don't think I've met Damien. I don't think he ever came to any of my shows or that I met up with him personally. I may have. But, but he has always been a fan. 
and he just felt like he wanted to do this for me. So uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for, are you there, uh, Tom Yamaguchi? No, Tom Yamaguchi is not there. Let me call Tom Yamaguchi back and add him into, into the crowd here uh, because um, sometimes he seems to be having a problem. So, Tom, if you can, if you can hear us, pick up uh, because we are dialing you. Anyway, and I would love to see Tom. Uh, okay, uh, it says Phil sent an attach. Oh, that's an old thing. Phil sent an attachment. What did he? What did he send an attachment for? I got said, some weird stuff too. Huh? Uh, well, I said I got a couple of weird messages too. I don't know what they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, are are, are you there? no? I guess Tom Amaguchi isn't there. Let me get rid of Tom. And let me go back to uh, Kevin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kevin, did I lose you too? Did I lose? I lost both of them. Oh, boy. Well, here we go. Let me see. Here. Can I get them by ringing both of them up? Ah, uh, this is not pretty tonight. Well, here comes Tom Amaguchi, and I think Kevin's online too. You online, Kevin? Yeah. Kevin? Yep. Are you there? Just uh, yeah. Let me get my camera going turn here. On, turn on the camera. There we go. There we are. And Tom. Yeah. I, Tom is on. I tried to call and and my Skype crashed. Your Skype crashed. Yeah. Yeah. It crashed wow. and. So I just got back on again. I'm calling from my my MacBook. From your MacBook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's gonna be, it, it, what? Yeah. I like it when you use. I like it when you used your phone because you get a really great picture on there. You know. Oh. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and, the thing and, is, if more people get it, I probably won't be able to see them all. And, but. It, and it's wide as well because. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it, square. Yours is square. So. A little square. Anyway, so wait, where what was it saying? So anyway, my my uh, the storage locker rental this month would have gone up. It was would have gone from three forty one, which was already way too high, to three sixty seven, and uh, I, I coincidentally, uh, Damien said, "I'm moving you out of that place. I'm going to do it for you." You know, and and he did it, and I didn't even know they were going to raise the rent next month. So mm. uh, I got out just in time. So I'm uh, probably raised it a few times. You didn't even know it. Well, go, go, <laughs> yeah. Going to Damien's place, I'm saving about two hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Which of course I'm going to send to Damien so he can <coughs> use it. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm going to spend it on things like I don't know, food, health, <laughs> or green screens. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Green, green screens. Green screens. Right. But. Uh, that's the thing about storage lockers. They're like uh, they're like drugs. You know, you don't know. Uh, you just you put your stuff in there and then you forget about it. And since it's on, uh, since it's on, uh, you know, constant pay or whatever that thing auto is, pay, auto yeah. pay, it just every month, you know, you, they charge you. But they never once sent me something saying next month it's going up twenty five dollars, because then maybe I would have thought more about it. Meanwhile, my business manager did get a lot of messages and stuff over the years. And over the years, he said, when are you getting out of that storage locker? He says, that's just eating up money. And I don't know. I, I was there 14 years. How much money could that have been? Maybe 20000 could have bought half the storage place itself. <laughs> probably $20,000, $30,000. I don't know. It started at, uh, at about $1,500 a year. And then each year, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. So, what size was it? Huh? It was huge. What size it was, was huge. Like, it was the biggest one they had. It was like, I don't like know. Like a one-car garage, you said, right? I could put a, I think it could have put a car in there. I don't know if Damien's yeah. listening and he wants to call up and join this to explain it. Probably like a 10 by 15 or something. It was a 10 by 15. Maybe it was 10 by 15, yeah. 10 by 12. Yeah. yeah. It was huge and tall. So, I mean, I had a lot of stuff in there. And uh, now it's all over at... Uh, at uh, uh, Damien's facility, which isn't uh, humidity controlled, but he said he's put me under some stairs in kind of like a basement-like area so that mm -hmm. the, the tapes will always be cool. And that's very important when you're talking about audio tapes and stuff like that. You know. Mm -hmm. So my entire life has been moved. <laughs> and I left behind, left behind an old 
uh, uh, desk that my parents owned. It was a tall desk with like a bookcase and you know drop down things that you could write. But it was, I, but I never. I uh, the only attachment I had to it was that it was part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no. Re I'm never ever. I would never ever ship that thing to New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about roll top, right? Where huh? the little thing no, comes down the roll top. No, it wasn't a roll top. I had a roll top in New York that I bought that was gorgeous. It was huge, and it was. I bought it for like, I think fifteen dollars or something, because somebody wanted to get rid of it, and it was a beautiful roll top desk. Not you know, roll tops if you get them today are small little things, and then you roll the top up, and isn't that nice? This was a huge, I mean, huge roll top. And, um, uh, but I just, when I moved to California, it was just one of those things I couldn't take with me. It was just too big, so I sold it off, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but no, this thing was, it was, it was not a great desk. It, it was the kind of thing that you had in a home in those days where you could say, I have a little desk here and here's where I can write a letter, you know. And you mm -hmm. had that, that thing with the blotter on it, you know, and you wrote letters with ink that you kept dipping. Um, and so uh, that thing was in there. I didn't want that. I didn't care about that. And then there were some desks. So now after 14 years of giving these people huge amounts of money, right? They have the colossal gall to tell um, Damien as he's checking out for me and just telling them we're leaving the premises, right? Uh, well, we're going to have to charge you a dumping charge. What? Oh, you can, I, they'll sell off those no, fucking no. desks. I bet you, a no, no. you know, uh, you yeah. know. So I'm, I told, I'm told my business, I wrote my business manager and I said, they try to charge us, just dispute the charge with the, uh, with the credit card company. Yeah, you just don't pay it and you'll end up on storage wars. Well, I, I, I yeah, I mean, I have, you, I, there isn't even enough stuff in there for storage wars. It would have been interesting if I just left everything in there. Then it would have been yeah. interesting. But no, we're gonna have to do a dumping charge. What? You're gonna, these desks are like three beautiful desks that I used for a studio. And uh, uh, I'm telling you right now, uh, those things are worth about a thousand bucks each. And they're beautiful, they're gorgeous. And uh, if they can't sell those off, I don't know what they can do. You know, so, uh, and they're gonna charge me a dumping fee? Well, if you're going to charge me a dumping fee, then you better dump them, okay, and not resell them. They won't. Huh? You they think, won't. You, you think they'll try to sell them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fuck you. And or have, have Damien throw them up on the local Craigslist for a week and see what happens. Well, no, but we no, we left them there. So, oh, well, yeah. Well, then, you know. You don't pay. Yeah. Like like all the other ones. Well, I do have, you say, I do, I do have, at public storage, I do have a credit card listed, but I said I took it off of, you know, uh, a, a auto, auto pay. pay. Yeah. And I don't know if they can actually use that credit card without my approval. I'm trying to think, well, if you've got it in the system, do you, do you put it in the system? or? Yeah, they... I put it, in, well, I had to put it in the system when I started yeah, out you, so that they would have may, some way to... You may be able to go in there and just pull the card off. No, I can't pull the card off because they, if I try to, they won't let you get rid of the card. You have to replace it with another card. Ah. Uh, See? But I don't know if they the can, I don't know if they can use that card without my approval. I mean, if I go to a restaurant, don't I have to sign the thing? You know? If they do, you can always dispute it. Oh yeah, well that's that's what I'm well, that's what we'll do. But my feeling is that after 14 years, a colossal gall to say we'll charge you a dumping fee is like really pearls after swine. I mean, what are they going to charge me? A couple hundred bucks? What? You really want me to pass a rumor around that public storage are a bunch of fucking assholes? Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> they are. That. <laughs> That's the orange one, right? The orange and blue one, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Public yeah. storage, yeah. yeah. Big chain. You know, it was it was perfect for the time when I left California. It just, you know, 138 bucks. I bought it, but hey, I got all this room. I didn't yeah. realize that after 14 years it would turn into, you know, a small fortune. I yeah. mean, I'd be paying the equivalent of about over $4,000 a year for that space now. And that's money I could use for other things. 
You know, and yeah. and Damien moved it into his place, and his place is going to uh, charge me. A, can I say? I won't say how much, but a fraction of that money. You know, so. Yeah, geez, that's fifty six thousand dollars that you paid. What? <laughs> that you paid for that storage over fourteen years. Well, no, but I did. I, no, but at a certain point, I was paying one hundred and thirty eight, and then I was paying oh, okay, like one hundred and seventy, yeah, and so on and so forth. Right about 40, yeah. But you know, I, I'd, I'd say maybe thirty, twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, and you yeah. want to charge me a dumping fee? <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish I were out in California right now. I'd let you do it. I'd give you the dumping fee, but I first go in there and take a shit on the desks. <laughs> take a dump. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. And then I signed out on uh, online. In fact, I want to make sure I'm still signed out. I said I'm leaving the 30th. You can actually do this all online these days. But then it says you should go to the uh, the uh, property manager and tell them you're leaving. So we told them we were leaving. And uh, they that's when they told um, uh, uh, Damien, well, there'll be a dumping fee. Yeah? Okay. Well... Try and get that, motherfuckers. You know? <laughs> I mean, I was I, 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 I was a good customer for all these years. You should be you should be happy with that. Uh, yeah, move out scheduled for the thirtieth. All right, good. So it's all done. You know, it's and I'm, you're a, you're ahead of the time. Yeah. Where is uh, again? I ask this question. Where is everybody tonight? You know, I know I know where Phil is. He isn't here. That's why Tom is. Oh, it's Phil Free Day. It's a Phil Free Night. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I'd like to hear from all our other friends and neighbors. And by the way, as long as Phil isn't going to be here, let's see if we can put tons of people on like we did the other night. You know, we had thirteen cool. people at one time because the, it can handle the video now. And then we tried to roll over to Jack's show, but that didn't work too well. It, it we didn't all work. Well, yeah, I on here's anyway. he, one of the reasons it didn't work is Jack. Yeah. Okay. Because when it comes to uh, technology, I'm surprised he knows how to turn on his computer. Okay. <laughs> um, and so to do something as simple as picking up from the last group. See, here's what we found, folks, is that when we signed off with that many people, or even if I, we had five people here, that under this new system, I have to actually physically sign it off at the group. If I don't sign the group off, and we found this out because the other night I had a problem where I lost my electricity here, and then uh, we went back on, and then we started our citizens panel, and then the lights went out again. And by the way, I'll tell you why that happened. Uh, I found out later on. And then they went back on, but I lost my power again, so I had to start everything else up. And then when I started up Skype, all these guys were sitting there talking to each other. We were still, yeah, we were all still connected. Yeah. They were all still connected. So we came up with the theory that if, if you don't sign off the group, you could on the next show, conceivably, because you're using the same number, uh, just, simply, in, right? just simply start up your Skype and there will be the group, and you click on the group, and there they'll all be. Yeah. Now, I don't think he understood that process. And I think that's why he couldn't do it. Basically, he's calling into your show, but it's switched over to his show. Well, no, he isn't calling into my show. He is now taking over Skype. Just group. like just like I went out of Skype because I, my power <laughs> went off. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. I came back on and I, put, and I started Skype, there you all were. Yeah. Well, it should have been the same way with him, but yeah. there was something he didn't know how to do or something, you know. I mean, it, it uh, and I, I'm not in Texas, and I can't be there to look over his shoulder and say, do that, do this, here's how you do that, you know. And it's, uh, it's a real problem. Well, I guess we're not going to hear from anybody else tonight, but this is a nice panel. Thank you. That, that's really <laughs> depressing, going from 13 people down to two, you know. <laughs> And I imagine. I'm so happy to depress you. Huh? I'm so happy to depress you tonight, Alex. Well, no, you don't, you don't, you're not depressing me. I love you, Tom. I wish you would call all the time. But I know that, you know, you're not available because you have a life. And secondly, That's we have Phil. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, 
That, that, uh, that uh, holds you off. But anyway, the rest of you can call me. I would love to hear from you. Uh, and also from people who have never called before, if you have Skype, and most of you do have it on your machines, just call us at GabNet Live. Uh, and let's have some new people sitting here as well. You'll be amazed That's at how much like. fun it is to talk to a bunch of other people and, and actually have an interaction, inter, inter, interaction, <laughs> an erection of talking to other people uh, and interacting with them um, uh, as opposed to uh, trying to do it in like, what is it, 138 characters or less or whatever Twitter yeah. is? 140. 140. Yeah, we actually engage in communication here. So give us a call. We have a phone number. Go to GabNet Live. It's all there, how to call the program and everything. And if you've got Skype, just give it a try. It's not difficult. In fact, once you use Skype, you'll find out that it's probably the best way to communicate with other people. Like, I can't tell you the last, I mean, I have Max. I can't tell you the last time I've used FaceTime. You know, so. Uh, anyway, give us a call, okay? Uh, do I have to beg? It's already 10. Oh, you're leaving us now. Well, <laughs> but we've got your wife in the background. So that's that's good. Hi, Hi how are you? Yeah. Hi, fine. How are you? Good, good. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, just working. So, Tom. Uh... Maybe we call Larry, Larry Bubbles Brown back. Have yeah, him talk all the time. Yeah, yeah, we'll let him talk. Well, I really enjoy listening to him again. Yeah, he is. I, he, I just love Larry, you know. This is something about Larry that's very special. Um, yeah, and I take exception to call him a Luddite. He's not a Luddite. He, oh, does, give me a break. He's he, is a, he is a connoisseur of classic tech. No, he isn't a con he, <laughs> Not even classic tech. Come on. This is a guy, I'm telling you, still has dial-up. Sure. You know, and uh, his computer is like, 15 years old i don't know how old it is yeah, that's classic. and he doesn't have i said well why don't you get a cable modem he says i don't have cable <laughs> you know i mean how are you gonna argue with that logic i mean i do laud him for having avoided all the pitfalls of technology because what hath it wrought <laughs> i just keep having this image of of larry connecting the internet you're like he, First thing he does, he turns on his computer and then he takes his phone receiver and puts it on the coupler, <laughs> and then he uh, dials. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't doesn't have one of those couplers. You remember the couplers? Yeah. Where it's and like, then, and then the dot matrix printer the starts sending yeah. out his email. And... Yeah, I, he could well have a dot matrix printer at his place. Listen, I've got computers that we were sitting in storage that are probably better than what he's got. <laughs> now they're 14 years old, you know. But anyway, I do once again want to thank Damien. I mean, what a solid, what a just a, a great thing. Uh, now, and I owe him dinner now. I got to buy him a dinner. I if I come out to California and I'm we're trying to get some stuff together to do in California. If I come out to California, Damien, you and Nicole are going to we're going to go to the best uh, Stuckies you got in your area. <laughs> Uh, we don't have stuckies yeah. in this. Oh, you don't have stuckies on the west coast. Uh, let me see here. I take you to the best. Um, um, what, what's another shit place to go eat? There are caros. 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 Pretty, pretty, pretty bottom yeah. of the barrel. Uh, here, here was the guy that actually became our twelfth person oh. the other night, and uh, he goes uh, by the name of I, I guess you, you use Mike, right, Mike? Oh, Mike's not there. Well, that's the problem, Mike. There he is. He's coming in. No, he's not coming in. No. Oh, I just saw. No. Here. Let me look here. Let me call him. Let me add him to the group. Let me see if he gets a call back. I don't know what his problem is. Uh, you know, some people, I think, don't have the newest Skype, and I think that may be one of the problems. Hello there. You there, uh, You there, Mike? Yeah, we are. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Yeah, turn on your camera. Okay. Uh, Hold on, let me get my camera on, get my mug shot in here. Yeah, but you know, yeah. I can get people on anyway, even though I couldn't get Mike on initially. But there he is, there he is, and he's, you're calling from where again, Mike, Florida? Bite your, bite your New York tongue, oh, Sacramento, California. Sacramento, California, oh, Sacramento. 
Yeah. Yes, we like to call it. Yeah. And uh, Sacramento is, uh, well, it must be hot out there, or was hot over the weekend. It was like up in the hundred, up in about around 100, wasn't it? Eight days of uh, 108. Yeah, last week was miserable. What does fucking Sacramento think it is? Las Vegas? Oh, hell no. Yeah, I know somebody in uh, Phoenix. Yeah. You wouldn't believe this. 120. It cooled down. You're right. Mind you. Yeah. It cooled down to 113. 113. My friend of mine was playing go- uh, playing bass uh, volleyball. Yeah. Uh, are, you, no. are you nuts? He goes, no, partially. Brother wow. loves Mason. It was 122. Really? Well, I'm going to make my picture a little smaller so we can, uh, because see, when only we only have like four people, all the pictures are so big that my picture cuts into the pic- their pictures. But now we can see driving down the road on the highway. Brian's in transit. Is Brian in transit? Where about where about is he at? Where are you again, uh, uh, Kevin? A uh, Brian, rather? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he's driving down the road. Mm-hmm. This is this is technology at its very finest. Now, if one more person can call, I can make my picture bigger. Uh, is that a freeway? Huh? Are you on a freeway? No, I am. Uh, I'm just on a. Uh, I'm on uh, West Carson Street by the South Side. Oh. On my way home. Or you're on your way home. Yeah, uh, I'm on my way home. Don't I'm you just love this? I would love to get more people in their cars or at the beach or uh, wherever. You know, I know Renee's out there. She's in Hawaii. You know, but anyway. So hey, listen. I want to bring this up uh, because uh, we got to bring it up. Um, I love the way the Republicans today made horseshit smell, try to smell good. They polished the turd, all right. They really polished the turd today. Um, What's his name? The, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the head of the Senate. Uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, Mitch, McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Saying that, yeah, oh, well, no, it, it's not dead. It's being delayed. <laughs> Why? It's being delayed so you can like try and and twist people's arms, you know, and 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 beat them into submission. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it it's just amazing. But I mean, they thought they were going to get this thing passed, and uh, all of a sudden, the CBO comes out with that report, and uh, every, literally every Republican becomes a coward. Again, yeah. don't you think that that's their 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 uh, Trump's corporate? You know the way he's running this co- country like it's a corporation. He thinks these things, if you slip them in at the end, yeah. you're going to have to go with it, and it ain't working. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Because there's a lot of people saying, you know what, you can't slip this by. By the way, I've been and joined. Trump, a, a Trump is nothing more than a dictator. Oh. We'll salute him, give him one of these salutes. You know, one of these. Kyle salutes, and that's it. You give him too much. You give him too much credit, though, because uh, he's too, he's not competent enough to be a dictator. Yeah, he's a, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Are you there, Jack? Right here, buddy. Yeah. Right here. We don't have a picture on you, though. Turn your camera. Uh, off. I, T- turn, I your, one of the, turn your camera I, off and on it, again. It hasn't come up yet. Huh? Yeah. What? I thought one of the funnier visuals I saw was the uh, prime minister of India trying to hug. <laughs> Trying to hug Trump. Mm. <laughs> he got about halfway around him. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Jack, turn your camera off and turn it back on. Let's well, see. If... I just did that, and let's try it again. And, okay, and, uh, there we go. Uh, round and round it goes, and where it stops, nobody knows. And wow! <laughs> well, yeah. Whee! and you have the latest. You have, you have the latest Skype installed, right, yes, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to tell you what happened the other night was. Uh, until you log out of GabNet, yeah, can't log in. So I could it, add calls from that no, until you no, logged out. N- 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 I, no, I logged out. Yes. I logged out of Skype. Yes. What should have happened, all these people, and I could hear them after I logged out, were all still connected to each other. 
But uh, but you so did, but some, in. somehow you didn't know what to do. Now p part of it might have been because I had gone off the air earlier in the night. I had lost power. What happened was we called the guy who was uh, taking over for our uh, super, and uh, he said I can't do anything about it about the lack of electricity. So I'm going to uh, 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 you know I'll have to do it in the morning. Well, what he did is he came all the way down from the Bronx and went there. And, of course, we had already gotten the switch turned on again down the basement. Right. And he decided just to make sure it was okay, he turned it on and off. And that's why I lost power again. Okay. Sure. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. That yeah. Now, I can't blame him. Look, he, was all, he came all the way down from the Bronx. He wanted to help us, and he didn't know that that, that was the problem. Yeah, because yeah. he, he said he wasn't going to be there until the next day, right? He, yeah, right. So, oh, cool. so hey, pay your electric bill. Yeah, so, yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, John. Hey, he's part of the union. Yeah. He's, you know, hey, he's it's, a union, it's a union house, though, yeah. you know. So anyway, well, so, he got paid overtime to do that. So what, ha what, what happened was um, um, I went off the air completely. And then when I came back on, I turned everything back on and I got the. Oh, there you are, Jack. Now we can see you. We got all the stuff going, right? And then I suddenly said, well, I got to turn on Skype. So I started Skype up and I put in my password and it opens up and there's everybody. Mm -hmm. And it just simply, I had to just push something that says connect or something. And they were all talking with each other. They were all doing their own show. Prove no, who needs me, you know. TCPP connection. Well, well, what happened uh, with me was yes. until, until you logged out, I couldn't hear anybody. Uh, until, uh, but, I was, I, but I was logged out of, I was logged out of, of Skype, you yeah. know. I, but I, you should have had that group come up. It, it, it did not hold. It did not hold. Well, I don't know. If I was there, maybe I could have made it work. But, I mean, but we'll figure this crap out. Because I mean, it'd, be, hey. it'd be fun if I could give you my audience, you know. Yeah, but I'd love it. You know, but, but you're going to do that uh, uh, next week. Anyway. Next, next uh, week from Friday, I'm going to finally take a day off here, and Jack is going to do the show. And. Uh, uh, and and uh, I thank him for that. And, um, you know, uh, and also either do his show, too, or... Uh, uh, yeah, we're going oh. to do three hours of nonstop nonsense. Yeah, well, hold on a second. I and, and I, and I want to pick right up with talking about toilets. Yeah. Oh, God, here we go. Here we <laughs> go. Jeez. Renee's got to call in. Yeah. I had more fun with that than anything we have done in a long, long time. Renee's got the orgasm toilet. There's a hands-free pussy pleaser. Yes. Yeah. Well, 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 you see, I have wanted one of those toilets for years. And uh, she has just about convinced me to screw up my courage and tell she who must be obeyed, who's in the next room, we're spending some money on this fancy toilet. <laughs> The only thing that bothered me about the toilet talk, mm -hmm. that could be a program, toilet talk, yeah. was, when, was when Phil said he hadn't bought any toilet paper in over a year. I didn't, I didn't hear that part of it. You didn't yeah. miss much. But, you know, if you, if, you're, if you go to Costco and you're yes. single, but he's not. He's got a woman in the house. Wow. If you're single, I think you could probably make a whole thing of toilet paper last for at least six months. Oh, yeah. Unless you're like me and you've got IBS, then you go through it in a week. About yeah. a week, yeah. Me. By the way, I saw a thing on uh, on the news last night about probiotics. Now, what happened was, you know, you know, I had this IBS problem. You don't hear me complaining about it anymore. I used to wake up every morning, my stomach was roiling, and I'd go to the bathroom, and it was, you know, <coughs> just it was, it was like I was peeing out of my ass. I mean, it was terrible. Yeah. And it's called uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And when you ask a doctor what it is, they don't, they can't, they've never been able to figure out what irritable bowel syndrome is. So they can't. You came... ever see blood? Huh? You ever see blood in your stool? No, you I know? never, I never saw blood in my stool. No, no. Uh, but I, I've had stool in my blood. However, that that was a big problem. <laughs> but okay. So anyway, so uh, I had, I had. I had it for 
years. And they came up with this drug that I would take and it would stop it for about maybe 10 weeks or something and then it would start all up again. And then uh, my insurance company suddenly decided they weren't going to cover it. And if I wanted to buy it, it was two, $2,100 a month. Holy shit. So I, yeah, what? holy, holy <laughs> shit is right. Literally. So then I had to go yeah. get some you kind said, of exception where they allowed me to have one bottle of this stuff and I held on to it like it was grim death. And I really had this terrible problem with IBS. Then one day I, I bought these little things at Costco that was called something digestive health or something. And I took it and I found I felt a little better. And so then I looked to see what was the prime ingredient, and they, it said probiotics. So I went out and I bought myself a bottle of probiotics, and I started taking two a day. And the IBS disappeared. I haven't really had IBS in months since I've started taking the probiotics. So, the, 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 so cut to last uh, yesterday, on the NBC Evening News, they said, uh, the truth about probiotics that they're not good for everything, you know, and they yeah, did. Too, yeah. Did you see it too? Yeah. And I'm going, okay, they're going to say, and people think it cures irritable bowel syndrome, but it's just doesn't. <laughs> blah 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 blah. And the first thing on the report was they said, well, you know, probiotics may be good for two things, and they named one. I can't remember what it was, and the other one was irritable bowel syndrome. They said it actually works for irritable bowel syndrome. And I couldn't have been happier. And then they talked about all the stuff it doesn't work for. People are using it as, you know, face scrub, you know, crap like that. <laughs> you know, but, but, probiotics, but probiotics work for irritable bowel syndrome. Why didn't my doctor tell me this? Why did my doctor only say the only thing we know that helps it is this $2,100 a month drug? You know what it is? Did the, no, no, don't know. No, I think the woman, yeah, <laughs> uh, 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 Brian's going money, money, money. I think just uh, they, it was probably that company had the uh, uh, the uh, salesperson with the biggest tits, you know, because they, I don't know if you ever sat in the doctor's office waiting to see your doctor and all those people come in with the, to sell yeah. medicines to the doctors. And it's always these women with huge accommodating breasts and bodies. Well, yeah. actually, the real problem is uh, doctors in this country yeah. do not study anything to do with supplements or vitamins or any of that crap. Uh, That's true. You, you go to Europe, and they actually learn a little <laughs> bit about that, and uh, they treat a lot of conditions there with supplements. But here's the problem, Jack. Here's the problem, and it always worries me. I'm I, uh, I'm not a big guy about supplements and about all all the <laughs> look at what Kevin's yeah, doing. Exactly. It, I'm not exactly. I'm not in uh, into all the supplements and everything else because I think there's a danger there. And the danger is is that some people, we won't call them quacks, but people who act like quacks, will suddenly say, "Oh, well, if you take this, this will help," you know. And then they're selling you all these uh, bogus remedies, which they can sell because they fall under the uh, under the uh, category of food supplements. And the people are thinking they're going to cure cancer and everything else because this is an unregulated industry. But the fact okay. is that we do know, at least according to this report uh, last night, that probiotics are will help with irritable bowel syndrome. And yet, okay, I, you know, uh, 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 so that one I can swear to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, this is a while back. My other doctor tried to, uh, to have me take the, the pill, flim flam or flam flam, or what it's called, uh, for weight loss. Oh, oh, that well, was, that was, that was a uh, pen pen flam, yeah. what was it called? It was, pen, uh, it was fen fen. Fen fen. No, that fen, was fen. Fen fen. Fen fen. The doctor told me, oh, you can take that, Mike. You know, it'll be good for you. Well, come to come find out. It gives you a heart attack. I told that to the doctor. doctor well, is, goes, isn't that Don't this, believe it, him. Don't it, believe him. Don't wasn't, believe him. Fen-Fen was two different drugs that people took in combination, and one of them, I think, was fentanyl. Yeah. My wife Which took Which is fen -fen. killing people. What? Jesus. My wife took Fen-Fen. Yeah. 
lost an unbelievable amount of weight. Yeah. And then found out uh, uh, that it, it could have killed her. Uh, and uh, her doctor, who had never prescribed Fin Fin for weight loss, saw that, hey, she lost 65 pounds. And uh, he started prescribing it to other people. And then he, she had to tell him, because she's one of those people who does research on what she takes, just, just doesn't just pop pills like most of us do, yeah. about uh, uh, they had discovered that, yeah, it could cause a heart attack. And sure enough, one of his patients who had been taking the fenton had the heart attack. Wow. But the, the one doctor told me, oh, you can take it, Mike. It's, don't believe what the people tell you about heart, heart attacks. It'll be all right. I look at him, I go, oh. go to hell. Well, Fenfen is a He's drug his uh, is, a, is a drug that people are taking to get high now, and uh, fentanyl, and it's killing yeah. them. It, and it's it's incredibly addictive yeah. as well. So The truest well, thing I ever heard any doctor say, buddy of mine, who I had as my as my GP for years, he said, we don't call it the practice of medicine for no reason. He said, sometimes we're just practicing. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. What, and, and guess doing? what? Get, guess who the, who, who the, uh, this, the uh, what do you call it? the test dummy is? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I, um, um, you know, when it comes to people who are overweight, uh, I mean, Low, low carb diet worked for me, okay? Worked phenomenally for me. Uh, and I don't know why it won't work for everybody else. And I think it's because that everybody else can't really do it. You know, they don't have the, the stay with it to do it. Uh, in the case of like Phil, Phil, you know, says uh, he tried it and he, it just wouldn't work for him. He just couldn't do it. Well, it was because he would go low carb one day and the next day have a cream puff, you know. Yeah. And the thing is, if you go low carb, you have to stringently say, I'm going to do 20 carbs or less a day for the next year if I have to, or as long as it takes to lose this weight. I did the low-carb diet. I lost weight. My blood sugars got better than they, they had been in years. Well, people with, with the diabetes, it's great for yeah. them. And I was jonesing for a slice of bread after about two months. You know, if a guy had to walk by with some Wonder Bread, I'd have said, here, take all my money. Well, I mean, I haven't gotten on the scale today, but I, I've been falling in love with the baguettes at uh, Costco. So I have a little slice of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, every day of it. And that's fine because it's, you know, it's got maybe 25 carbs, but now that I've lost all this weight, I can afford to take those carbs in, okay? I'm, well, I'm not out to lose any more weight. Uh, and I find, the, the, I find the bread isn't, isn't uh, putting, uh, it putting any weight on me. You know what I dream what? about? What? what I dream about is, uh, you know, my first wife was from New Orleans. Yeah. And have you ever had a beignet? Oh, yeah, of course I've had a beignet. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I have wet dreams. What's about that? Those what's things. that big? What's that big? What's that big market? What's that big? Jack, come mm -hmm. to the club. Welcome to the club, sir. <laughs> I want to win yeah, right now with a good big hot. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What's the big store in uh, the big eating place uh, uh, that you go to there where they make nothing but beignets? That's the only thing they do. Uh, I'm oh, trying, I don't. I'm trying to remember the that. name of it. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I've even you brought know. beignet mix home, and you can actually make them at home. I mean, they're wonderful. They're wonderful, but, but, you know, uh, the trade-off is then I get fat, and I'm happy, happier this way. Now, I, uh, I, my, my, supposedly my, my cholesterol, in spite of the fact I take cholesterol-lowering drugs, went sky high the last time we took a test. Now, it may have been an anomaly, and they may have fucked up, and I've got to go get another test. I promised my doctor I would in about three months, and it's been like four <coughs> months now, and... Uh, but I said to him, I said, let's just say that it has gone up like this. I said, do we know for sure it's going to kill me? And he said, no. I said, okay, so that's not the downside. All right. I said, what if I go off all this stuff that might be causing cholesterol and I put back the 60 pounds I took off? Which way would I be better? Having the 60 pounds and good cholesterol? 
or bad cholesterol and being 60 pounds less. And he said losing the weight was more important. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, what I did with my with me, I lost uh, weight 20 pounds mm-hmm. so far. What it is, is eat smaller meals. Mm-hmm. Portions, yep. For some reason, I'm having to bring people on tonight. I don't know what the what the uh, what the problem is, but I just had to call John Rockwell back because when I clicked on him, he didn't. Uh, there come he on. is. There he is. Hey. I don't know what hey, happened, John. Tonight, back. tonight I've been having the problem that I had with Skype for a while, but I know how ah. to handle it. I just simply hang up on you and call you okay. right back. Is the video up? I'll see yeah, you the video's see up. Okay. Uh, John, you're, you're there, <laughs> and and a handsome there you are. Oh, I thank you. And Brian, we can't that, we can't see you because we talk about toilets. <laughs> oh, that well, we like just fun. lost Brian. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, is so. I mean, what, what what's better, the the high cholesterol or the losing sixty pounds? And the oh, losing sure. sixty it's pounds, weird. I think, trumps the high cholesterol. Yeah, it, look, you know, uh, uh, most of us, myself included, carrying around more weight than we need to carry around, and. Um, uh, I would have, if I had have uh, lost uh, about 45, 50 pounds, uh, I'd have saved myself a heart bypass. Yeah. Mm. But isn't this true, though? If you eat a smaller meal, it does help. No, oh, yeah. Hey, Christine. That's how I've been doing. The first I thing lost 20 pounds. 20 the first pounds thing, lost. The first thing they tell you as a diabetic, eat smaller meals but more often. Right. Exactly. Thank you. I'm mm. a diabetic. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but if you if you go low carbohydrate, you may you, you may not need to use the insulin. I don't use the insulin. I take the pills. Yeah, yeah insulin is not necessary for all diabetics. That's type 1. Well, no, by the way, I... welcome, welcome uh, back to Alex Bennett's uh, doctor's office. You're welcome to read <laughs> read the magazines and take one home with you. We have fields. Well, open now, we... spread our cheeks and smile. <laughs> by the way, is, is Chris A B M D? Is Christine there? Hello, Christine. Can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. I was muting because I'm in the car because I just left my office. All right. Well, uh. well, mute when you're not wanting to talk because we can hear the sound well, from your car. you know, I was going to have you guys, I wanted to bring this up last Friday and get your take on it. Yeah. So, um, uh-huh. I'm kind of in a shit storm in my office, in my company, whereas um, we have our own Anthony Weiner scandal going on. Ooh. Ooh. And Ooh. one of our bankers, um, who's no longer with us, I was directly supporting him, um, was having discussions with a prospective um, it was a client and they had moved to another client and he was kind of recruiting her mm-hmm. and it turned to lewd messages and a good old fashioned dick pic. Yeah, who, who just called and us? Now, Wait, hold on a second. Who, who just called us? It's Tim Albright. Oh, okay, Tim. All right, go ahead, Christine. Continue. So she filed a lawsuit, and they're coming after the company, the bank, my division, which is the corporate investment side, and the individual. And then in the lawsuit, you see there's 50 um, additional uh, defendants that their names and titles are not known yet. So they're trying to sue the company, saying we're responsible for his LinkedIn account and what he did. Okay. So what did he do on that account? So uh, allegedly, let's say allegedly, because oh, oh yeah. no, 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 no. There are in the exhibits are very clear. You see the conversations between the two of them. She kept it very professional. He turned it to you know wanting to play and here's and he sent up his, his erect, you know what? And basically, she didn't reply and went and filed suit. Now, was she, now, wait, now, wait a minute. Hold, now, who, who, she, uh, hold on a second. Who was this woman in relationship to the company? She was a client at one company. Yeah. Um, and were and and met the banker on a deal. Um, yeah. and worked on a deal with others there. Yeah. And then she left, and went to another firm who happens to also be a, a company of ours, a client of ours, 
down in Southern California now. Okay. So and the interesting thing is her law firm that she hired mm -hmm. is Mark Garagos. Oh, good. Well, then this guy's in a lot of trouble. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 now, 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 so he, he what, dick picked her is what he did? Yep, exactly, and lewd messages. Wow. The lawyer's going to go after everybody and everything he can and then whittle it down from there. Yeah, they're going to go well, after the I mean, yeah. They're going to go after the it's company first. Well, yeah. they are. They've named the bank and mm -hmm. then the sub the sub company and the individual. And then, like on page 31 of the complaint, they say there's a, another additional 50 defendants yet uh, to be named. Wow. 50. Wow. Uh. The janitor. So they're trying to make this a landmark case, and it kind of opens up the whole, because we're in a very social media-oriented type world now. And right. I'm curious to see what you guys think, if, if, like, you think a company should be held accountable for someone's personal, professional profile on LinkedIn. Well, you know, it isn't really so much a question of what I think. It's, it's what can you get in a court of law and what can you prove in a court of law. And uh, in this particular case, you're going to go for the person with the deepest pockets. All right. And it's undoubtedly not this guy who committed the problem, but the deepest pockets of the company he works for. And and so that's why they're going after after your company and why they, they see that as the biggest payday. Um, you know, I mean, they'll, they'll, he'll be named in the suit as well and so on, but he can file bankruptcy and they'll never see their money, right? Meanwhile, uh, the, the company you work for doesn't want to file <clears throat> bankruptcy over something like this. Plus, they are probably insured against such things. And so the lawyer who is going after them is thinking the, that too, that, you know, the company he can get he can get the the insurance company to settle so yes jack jack can you hear us jack jack hello can you can you hear us yeah exactly that yeah. you know the, the 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 word i hear you okay he's there yeah i can hear him yeah, I can hear you. I can, I can hear you. Wait a minute. Are you listening to us uh, on the... the you know, you know what he's doing? But, he's but, listening uh, to us on what, the internet. What I find... He's listening to us on the internet. Can you hear me right now? No, I'm listening. I'm no, listening. Jack. I can hear him. Oh, okay. All yes. Right. And All I right. can hear Jack. I can hear both of you. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm, too. I'm listening on Skype, but Alex... You're breaking up on Skype tonight. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I know. I, I uh, noticed that I'm dropping I some think, frames tonight and things like that, so it's a bad, uh, bad signal going out there. But I can't mm -hmm. do anything about it while we're doing the show. Um, well, this, well, this is just, well, well, this is just telling me that I'm going to be screwed completely tonight. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, but the thing is, what gets me about uh, these cases is in light of the Cosby trial. What mm -hmm. does this mean? Because uh, I was convinced that Cosby was going to be found guilty. Yeah. Would have gone to the bank with that, particularly considering the composition of the jury. Yet, from what I have read over the last few days, it was a hung jury right down the middle. So who, who knows what this what this means well, you about also, you also weren't, uh, you these weren't, kinds of you, cases as yeah, we go you, forward. You weren't at the trial. Uh, and not being at the trial, you can't hear me, Jack? Can everybody else hear me? Can everybody else hear me? I can be just barely hear you. Really? Yeah, you're just breaking up a bit. Yeah, you sound. Yeah, slow. you are breaking up, Alex. But well, I can hear you. I, yeah, I can't. I really can't do yeah, anything. Yeah, breaking up a little bit without rebooting yeah, all my. Yeah, it's like you're going into slow mo speaking. Well, yeah, I, let's try and bear with it. Oh, uh, I think we lost it. Uh, hmm. uh, boy, uh, hmm. You're frozen now. Yeah, I'm frozen well, now. Anyway, there you well, go. 
Welcome to the intersection with Jack Bishop while Alex is <laughs> Okay, everybody everybody stay where you are. I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to close I'm going to close down my Skype. Let's go to your take over the show, Jack. Wait a minute. I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, um, kill Skype here. You all stay there cuz I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to you know, I'm going to come back and let's uh, let's see here. Uh, oh. sign out of Skype. All right, and uh, they're probably they may probably will find out they're still there when I sign back on if this is like it was the other night. If it's not, uh, they'll have to call. Sorry, we couldn't connect to Skype. What what is the problem here? This is weird. Retry. Okay, there we go. Now it's connecting. All right, here we go. Come on. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, will you, please? Are you ready to do it? Oh, I've got some problem with Skype tonight. Hmm. This is weird. Uh, I don't understand it. Well, anyway. Let me stop this. Oh, there we go. Sign in. Okay, here we go. Uh, I probably got some problem happening with my... Uh, Sign in. Is something wrong? Probably with my uh, uh, with my uh, um, bandwidth. But I I can't. I would have to sign off the whole network in order to. And now I'm I'm not being able to sign into Skype. Look at this. You can actually. I wonder if you can see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? No. Actually, all you can see is like the last people I had on. What is wrong here? Come on. Close. Okay. Let me open this up here. Let me. Let me. Uh, let me see here. No, uh, this is. Uh, quit Skype. Quit Skype. Okay. Yes, I want to quit Skype. Quit. Okay. Now I'm gonna t start. Skype up again. It's funny because I, I I completely restarted my machine tonight. Which I do when I uh, uh, when I uh, you know start a new week. I always I always reboot the whole machine and everything. And uh, this is just having a real problem here. This is just really having a problem. I'm not able. I'm I'm having a hard time signing on to Skype. Uh, and the only thing I could do, folks, here is uh, just stop the whole program and reboot and reboot the modem and all of that. Say so we couldn't connect to Skype. Now they can, okay? So I go put into my thing here and I sign in. I sign in and it won't sign in. There is something wrong with my internet more than anything else. Let me see here. And also, things have frozen over here on this side. I, you know something? I think we're down. I think that's the problem. We are just, uh, we're, our, uh, the internet is completely screwed. Uh, uh, let me see here. Except in violation, Skype li library, sign in. Oh, that won't work. Wow, there we go. Now I'm trying to. There is a problem, I think, with my internet connection. Uh, and uh, the question is, what do I do here? Oh, boy. I may have to just say that's it for the show tonight because uh, I, I can't, I, I would have to reboot my internet connection. And I don't know if I can do that. So I uh, just don't know what to do. I guess what we'll do is we will close the show off. That's what I'm going to have to do here, folks. I will, uh, I will close it off. I will play a theme. And we'll say uh, good night to everybody because uh, I can't continue. This is just so ridiculous. Anyway, listen. Uh, we'll see. We'll probably be back here because I'm going to reboot the uh, uh, the modem. 
But uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to see you all uh, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.